Yes, ten minutes past one. Hello, how are you today? So let's jam. Again. <laughs> I'm Anthony Duke from South Africa. I'd like to tell you a little bit about a radio station that was born out of violence and brutality and an undemocratic South Africa. But eventually it all came crashing down. South Africa had a policy which was called apartheid, which meant that blacks and whites should be separated. Park benches that were only for the white and others for blacks. Different beaches for different races. Going into the townships and simply harassing the people and water hosing them. Going into houses at night, waking people up at four in the morning, taking away a father, taking away a mother, taking away a brother. Just generally making life absolutely miserable for anybody who wasn't part of the ruling elite or the ruling nation, the white nation. Parliament decided that television was evil, so we wouldn't have it. Many, many artists had been banned in South Africa if their music had slight racial overtones of any sort. Pink Floyd, Dire Straits, the police. The police were banned purely because of their name. There were situations where activists who were being questioned would jump from 40 floors up from the police building rather than go through the torture that they were going through. Or they were pushed out the window. No news was being given to the white population of South Africa that would indicate what blacks were suffering. And we thought to ourselves, they're not getting the right news, let's do something about it. And we did something about it just after the, probably the most famous riots that ever happened in South Africa, which was called the Soweto Uprising, when black kids were forced to speak the Afrikaans Dutch language. This language was seen as the language of the oppressor and they rejected it. And watching what was happening in the country at the time with the, with the uprisings, with the bloodshed, with this total domination of one race over another, I think the germ started for, for Capital Radio. And we felt that a popular radio station with a totally independent news team would get the message to those who did not know what was going on in the country. The South African government thought the solution to what their problem was, which was a mixing of the races. The majority of South Africans were obviously black. So they decided to almost ring fence the different tribes into different areas uh, and call them independent countries. You had different races and they'd put them there. The one reason was to keep them there and the other reason was to keep them out of white South Africa. It was illegal at the time to open up your own radio station in South Africa because the SABC controlled the airwaves. And the SABC was, of course, the government mouthpiece. But these countries were supposedly independent. So we reckoned we could broadcast from there and put a real radio station and real news out to the South Africans. We went over to London. Um, Sir Richard Attenborough gave us permission to use Capital Radio's format. We changed the name from Capital 194 to Capital 604. We got the biggest medium wave transmitter in the southern hemisphere and we stuck it on a high mountain. We put the transmitter up. It was actually a one kilowatt transmitter, massive. We detuned that to 500,000 watts and we put it on omnidirectional so it would get all over the country. We had two shortwave transmitters as well. This stretched our signal worldwide. In the headlines at this time of the morning, the White South African Mine Workers Union will call a full-scale strike if blacks are issued with blasting certificates. Shortwave could be heard in places like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South America, and we'd get fan mail from Siberia, from the top end of Sweden. But what it also did was it gave Africa our signal and our message. 
We found out that our beloved first democratic president, Nelson Mandela, used to listen to shortwave, listen to capital, in his cell on Robben Island. Nothing was ever said of the unrest and the uprisings in the different townships of South Africa. Nothing was said about, or as little as possible, about the sanctions that were coming. So nothing like that was ever broadcast on the SABC news. They would never admit that this was happening in their country. But we could. We could tell the world. Capital Radio. Music power.